Thank you very much, Kenneth Castiel. I don't think any of our lives are going to be the same again after that. Now, when you watch the news, we are constantly bombarded with images of negativity, images of war, and violence, and intolerance, and pollution, and a president who can't keep off Twitter, <laughs> you lack cola, you know, naval incursions. And on one hand, we've got all this negativity in our world. But on the other hand, we've got our next speaker. And suddenly, the universe is in balance again. Hers is a message that the world desperately needs. And she's here to share it with us, share it with us today. Please welcome our next speaker, Nellie Shellaram. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and good morning, everyone. So good to see you. And thank you, Julian, and this team backstage. They're quite incredible, you know. Their timing, so exact, but thank you all. So my subject matter today is finding peace in chaos. First of all, namaste. Some of you already know the meaning. It means the divine in me recognizes the divine in you. And then we bow. And the reason why we bow is to accept that we can all learn from each other, that we grow with each other. We are human beings having, you know, this great experience, but we forgot we are spirit along with the human beings. So we get trapped. We get trapped in our world of pain, of anger, of noise, you know, all these things go into our heads and we lose who we are, who we are. And when we lose who we are, then we're not in balance with ourselves. So how do we maintain the balance? By constantly remembering that these, the outside world is our movie theater. Yes, Shakespeare was absolutely right. He said, we are all but actors on a stage, and what a stage, and what a stage. And isn't it nice to know that we can act, so we can put on many costumes. So long as we have the peace inside, we can put those costumes on. But when there's no peace inside, what happens to us? We think we are the costumes. So if the costume gets torn and broken apart, we get torn and broken apart. And the spiritual, the spiritual teaching is, do you know, Guys, we're much more than that. The yogic teacher, teachings talk about the self with a capital S. What is the self? Some people call it God. Some people call it Jesus. Some people call it Shiva. Do you know? The Psalms say, be still and know that I am God. So when Moses was on Mount Sinai, he asked, who are you, God? And he went, I am that I am. My spiritual master, Sri Swami Satchitananda, says, guess what you start with? What do you mean, Gurudev? I am your name. <laughs> I am Nelani. So who is the I that lives in you? When you understand, when you understand that we are spiritual beings traveling this beautiful earth, and it is a beautiful earth, until... We fill it with fear until we fill it with fear. Why do we do that to ourselves? Because we think the outside world is us. It's not us. And when we can look upon our world and love it and care for it and nurture it, but how do we nurture it to understand that we are all namaste? We all have the magic within us. And our job as human beings is to work with these things, to stop the wars, to stop the bombs, to stop the earthquakes, climate change, we panic. It's too cold, it's too hot. And the yogi says, Learn to balance within all this trauma. Learn to balance. You know, today I see so many young kids, so many divorces, as you all know, and they're so troubled. They're so broken. I see kids that self-harm, and I teach them that the world is not about their parents. Yes, their parents bring you up, and you know things go wrong. It's, there's nobody to blame. Find yourself, find yourself, make yourself, you know, don't blame anyone. Because so long as we in blame, we cannot, we cannot be the silence within. So how do we do it? How do we do it? 
we stop all the noise. <laughs> Facebook. Technology is great, but don't get sucked up in it. Stop a moment. Find your peace. So there is a solution. And the solution is really quite simple. And I'm going to ask you all to kindly sit up on your seats with me, because it'd be really great, you know, when the world is so chaotic and you're so frightened and you feel so lost and there's no one to turn to. You don't have to go and get a tablet. What is it going to do? It's going to delay your process. You have to sit down and watch your mind. What's going on in your mind? What is going on there? If you can watch your mind think, you can fix it. Just like when you take photographs and your camera, you can delete the ones you don't want. And we can do the same thing with our minds. We can delete the viruses we don't want. Isn't that great? That is our God-given gift. That is the silence within. That is the I am within who will give us everything we need along this path. Everything we need. We just have to ask, you know, in the Bible it says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, and knock and the door will be open to you. And you know what? That is so true. You all know that. If you don't ask, you don't get, right? If you're hungry, you have to ask for food. Children ask for food when they're hungry. You don't get. See, the problem is we seem not to know what to ask for. What to ask for? We've forgotten who we are. So we ask for a bigger home, you know, a new computer, a better job, more money. And we forget to ask for peace. <laughs> and I think my spiritual master gave me the best lesson of all when he said, Melanie, make peace your God. Don't allow anything or anyone to take away that peace, not even God. And at that point, I went like, you know, I had this great belief of this God at that time, and I still do, but my God now is very different. My God now is a God of love. My God now is not one that punishes us or hurts us or gives us presents when we do good or bad. No, 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 no. My God is one of love. And I, reached, I read the scriptures, and the scriptures are old Vedas. They tell us, where is the Lord of love? Deep inside the hearts of all is the Lord of love, Bhagavad Gita. The radiance of Buddha shines in the hearts of all Buddhism. And then, my favorite from the Upanishads, the Lord of love, no larger than a thumb, lives in the hearts of all. And there it is, there it is, in the hearts of all. Love, love, love. So, you know, when we work in goodness, we contact this energy called love or self. We actually make a contact, and this is where prayer happens, you know. What are prayers? Strong, powerful thoughts. As you think, so all of you know, you become. So, like I said, sit up, take a deep breath with me, and exhale. Close your eyes. See if you can watch your thoughts. Take another slow, deep breath and feel your entire body just rest, just rest. We need it. We're so tense all day long. We think too much, we eat too much. <laughs> just be. Open your eyes, take another slow, deep breath, and see yourself in your mind's eye as joyful. <laughs> smile. Can you smile? <laughs> you know, when you smile, you stay younger longer, so smile more, because we move the muscles of our face. You know, now they come up with a new thing called face yoga. I don't know if you heard about it. You make all kind of funny faces. And if, why? Because the muscles need to be moved. And if you look at happy people, 
if you look at happy people, what are their lives like? You know, um, they're serving. It's not all about I, me, and mine. And this is what brings the chaos to our life. Notice when you're really miserable. It's all about, ah, I want, I want, I need, I have to have. And if I don't have, I'm going to be miserable. It can't be, maybe it's not so hysterical. But inside it is, and this is where you get the panic attacks. And this is where the fear builds up. Hmm? But when you go, you know, Sri Patanjali in our yoga science tells us, and some of you might know this, some yogis in here, to the one who protect, who practices contentment, supreme joy is gained. Can you do that with me, please? To the one who practices contentment, all of you, supreme joy is gained. And you know, it really, it even feels freeing to do that, you know? It feels so good, you're not afraid. You're not afraid to be joyful. And what is our problem? We always look at the negative. Human nature, what can we do? Love ourselves anyway, and try to change the chin. Try every morning to spend some quiet time with yourself, to be with yourself, and watch your own mind. You know, the enemy is not without. The enemy is within us. It's our own thoughts. You know, my master used to say, you can make your world a heaven or a hell. Depends which glasses you want to wear. I choose to wear rose-colored glasses. <laughs> and you know what? The world may be hell outside, but it's heaven in here for me. And it's heaven in here for all of us when we choose the path of peace. You know, we're all humans in this world, all of us. We've been sent here to care and love for each other, but instead we hurt each other. We kill animals indiscriminately. So many slaughtered every day. There's wars every day, people killing each other. And I'm looking at the news and I said, my goodness, when are we going to learn as a human race? And don't we know, when we practice the peace in the chaos, we can influence people. You know, in Washington, they did this uh, experiment many, many years ago. And it was documented. A group of yogis or meditators, doesn't matter. Yogi just means one who's connected to the higher self. Got together and they sat and meditated in a park. That night, the crime reduced by 75%. Because we're connected. They also did an experiment. A butterfly flapped its wings in Hawaii, and it was felt all the way in Los Angeles. If a butterfly can have such an effect, think of us as human beings. So what is our job left in our world? To find a peace. And it's all inside of us. Isn't that great? We carry it. Do a mantra. Bless the world. Sit back. Relax with the world. Watch it going back by, and don't try to squash it and control it and make it what you want to, you'll never be able to do it. Our world is for there for us to learn. It's the theater in which we grow in. So um, think about having some time loving yourself a little bit more to enjoy this journey through life. It is very short. I know it well. I have lost many people in my life that have meant a lot to me, and so have many people in this room. And we know the journey is short. Don't waste time hating, being angry. Try. You can do it just by watching your mind. That's what yogis do. We watch our mind and make sure, you know, that we, we, we can control the thoughts that go in so that we can live a beautiful life to live, love, serve. You know, this is our motto. Live to love, love to serve. Because then you're not into the I me mind that makes you so, so kind of agitated. But my goodness, what can I do to make my world a better place? Can I create can, what they're doing here today, the culture, you know, music, dance, art. There's so many beautiful things, beautiful faces. Everybody is so beautiful. Anyway, with that, I will end my talk. And I want to thank you all for listening to me. And I would ask one last thing. Could you all join me in a mantra? And the mantra is, may the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. Can you do it with me? 
May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. Namaste, everybody, and thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melanie Shellaram. I think uh, that's a mantra that none of us could disagree with. We'll be back in a few minutes.